In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all, to all of you who are in church in St Andrews this evening uh, for our Maundy Thursday Eucharist and also for all who are joining us um, on the live stream. This evening we gather with the disciples in the upper room with Jesus. This will be our last supper with the Lord, but even now our hearts and minds are more concerned with ourselves than with him. Knowing this, Jesus will wash our feet to remind us that he, the Word made flesh, has come in humility to serve us and to give us an example to follow. During this Passover meal, which recalls the freeing of the Israelites from their slavery in Egypt, Jesus will take the bread and wine and give them a new and deeper meaning. By receiving them, we will invite him to dwell in our hearts and to share with us the sacrifice that frees us from our slavery to sin and death. Then, after the meal, Jesus will go to the Garden of Gethsemane and we will mirror this by carrying the Blessed Sacrament from here up onto the high altar behind me. And so this place tonight will be for us the Garden of Gethsemane. Then finally, as Jesus prays and battles with his loneliness and the horror of his impending death, we will mirror his desolation by stripping the altars and removing the symbols of joy from our church, knowing that tomorrow he will be stripped of his dignity and be hung on a cross to die. So now, as we gather in the upper room to be with our Lord at the Last Supper, we give thanks for his great love and we join with the angels of heaven as we say together, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to the Church to proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, for he is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 4 and verses 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. 
this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To God. Our psalm is from our psalm 116, and it can be found on the inside pages of the Green Readings booklet. And I invite you to respond with the words in bold. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. I will lift up the cup of salvation. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I will lift up the cup of salvation. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. I will lift up the cup of salvation. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Beloved, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. You are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please sit. Do you know what I have done for you? The doing of things, two great actions which we remember this night. At a particular stage in Shakespeare's play King Lear, Lear's daughter Cordelia utters the words when she's asked to express her affection for her father, her thoughts about him. She says, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. What she was getting at, of course, is the shortcoming of words, their inadequacies, and therefore, by implication, the importance of actions. Do you understand what I have done for you? Well, we've completed now pretty much, or well, just a bit more than a year of restricted actions and inverted understanding where not doing something, touching, hugging, has been a sign of care. Where keeping our distance, crossing the road, has been the sign not of a poor Samaritan, but of a good Samaritan. Where we have washed hands rather than shaken them. During which, for most of this time, words have really been practically all we've had to express our feelings. We have had to heave our hearts into our mouths far more than probably we would have liked. 
that we meet tonight to remember two great actions of the church's year. An evening when Jesus recognized that sometimes words are inadequate. He needed to leave them some me mechanism whereby he would, they would remember him with no imperfections, no shortcoming of understanding. So we remember tonight the Last Supper with his disciples and the washing of feet. And it's very striking that in John's account, which we've just heard, John has no specific account of the words of institution at the Last Supper. He records the supper that tells us, and it's only John, about the washing of the feet. In contrast, the other gospel writers and Paul himself, as we heard in our epistle, Paul and the others do indeed give and record Jesus' words of institution. And scholars and, um, and, and people looking at the, at the scriptures rightly point out, or as a, w a way of, e of explanation, the sense that in which the Eucharist, as it were, is a thread throughout the whole of John's gospel. Think of chapter 6, the feeding of the 5,000, and Jesus' great discourse on the bread of life, that he is the bread of life, the living bread, the bread that will never die. So in that sense, the Eucharist is a thread throughout the whole of John's gospel. Whereas in the other gospels, the Eucharist isn't quite so transparent. It isn't quite so in the forefront. The other gospels, if you like, have greater emphasis on the servant suffering nature of Jesus, that he's here offering his availability. He's come as one to serve. So what happens in a way is it's the same threads. They're just put, put together rather differently. So John has the, in, this evening, has the narrative of servanthood and sacrifice and humility in the story of the washing of the feet. Whereas the other gospel writers, they emphasize on this night the institution of communion. Less Eucharistic, if you like, because John has been Eucharistic much more throughout the gospel. So what we're left with then is the two accounts, quite rightly, we bring them together this evening. Um, but it's worth reflecting on one of the oddities of this in terms of how the church observes and remembers, has remembered over the years. The Passover meal, which Jesus was celebrating and marking in the upper room, was an annual event for the people of Israel. Um, foot washing was a daily event, washing dirty, dusty feet. And the church, in its liturgical practices, has inverted those. So what became an annual event, the Passover meal, the Last Supper, has become a weekly, and in some cases, a daily occurrence. Whereas now, as I said, the daily activity of washing dusty feet is a once a year event in the life of the church, or possibly twice a year, because sometimes it's included in the ordination of deacons. And it is worth pondering, albeit very briefly, how different church going would be if each week we came and all of us had our feet washed, rather than us receiving communion each week. How different it would look and whether or not it would actually be a, perhaps a more accurate picture of the church that Jesus intended us to have. Because, of course, what would happen is that week by week, or possibly day by day, first of all, we'd be very careful what we wore. We'd make sure we had sandals, and if we wore socks, they'd be very easy to remove. And the cleric, whoever it was who was washing feet, would become extremely familiar with all the wear and tear that a people had carried throughout their lives. And she or he, as they washed feet and touched them, all this importance of actions again, all the things we're not allowed to do now, might dare to say, this is my body. And the person whose feet were being washed might reply, amen. Recognition of deep, deep incarnation, that we, the people of God, are Jesus' body. This is my body given for you. Perhaps that would be a more accurate picture of the kind of church and community of fellowship and believing that Jesus intended. 
But as we witness this evening, which we will do shortly, the washing of feet, we can reflect on one further thought, which is the question of the mutuality. Jesus, you remember, allowed his feet to be washed, as well as washing the feet of others. And I sometimes think that the reading we've had from John's Gospel should never be read in isolation, that we should always be read in tandem of the story where Jesus had his own feet washed and anointed. Having your feet washed puts you in a curiously vulnerable position. Washing them can be an act of humility and service, but it can bestow a kind of power. That's the nature, because you're not as vulnerable. Having your feet washed is quite a vulnerable thing. But really, in the end, it's not about vulnerability and power. It is an act of love. And I'm slightly ashamed about how long it took me to realize this, but realize it I did eventually, when in an all-age service many years ago, we had a family washing, among others, my feet at an all-age service. And as part of the, uh, to help them get ready for it, as it were, we had a bowl, I suspect it was um, a mixing bowl from our kitchen, and we had two white towels and they happened to be the very same white towels, albeit a bit tired by now, that we used when our children were very small, when they first, when they were infants. And when they emerged from the bath, we used to wrap them in these tiny, well, the, the, the children were tiny and the towels weren't much bigger. And then I suddenly saw this towel being wrapped around my feet in exactly the way that I had wrapped it around my children. And I thought, goodness me, that's how much God loves me. I wrapped my children and loved them so much. And now my feet are being wrapped in this t same towel. And then I realized and understood, perhaps in a way I hadn't before fully, just how much God loves me and you. And so say all of us. I cannot heave my heart into my mouth, said Cordelia. Jesus realized that sometimes we, none of us can heave our hearts into our mouths and that we all need actions by which to communicate our love and to receive it and to dare to believe it. And that, I think, more than anything else, is what we mark tonight, the fathomless, astonishing depth of God's love for us, wrapping us in a towel like a newborn child. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, taught us that what we do for the least of our brethren, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as he is the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who are about to institute your holy sacrament at the Last Supper, wash the feet of the apostles and taught us by your example the grace of humility. Cleanse us, we pray, from all stain of sin, that we may be prepared to share your holy mysteries for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just to remind you that our prayers of intercessions you will find in the green booklet. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one, we pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and look forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. If you're comfortable too, please stand as we come to share the peace together. Jesus says, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord always be with you. And also with you. You may just like to turn, give a little bow to people around you. Of course, we can't shake hands or anything like that, but do feel free to do that if you would like to.
Please do be seated. Infinite and intimate God, this night you kneel before us and wash our feet. Bound together in your love, trembling, we drink your cup and watch with you who are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with the angels and the saints as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. the bread of life, broken for us. Lord Jesus, give us this this bread bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Jesus Christ Christ is holy. Jesus Jesus Christ Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the holy mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption, for you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. As the altars are stripped, we'll hear words from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all the bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, 
all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn saying that he has done it. When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinful men. Come, let us go. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. <laughs> 